Financial Officer of Commerce India Limited. We are happy to announce that Commerce India Limited recorded the highest annual revenue and profit during the year ended March 31, 2024, aided by strong domestic demand across various market segments and proactive measures by the company on managing costs and improving profitability. I would like to share the financial results of Q4 FY24 and full year FY24 through this call. I'm now going through the financial results. For the quarter ended March 31, 2024, with respect to the same quarter last year, our sales at rupees 2,269 crore are higher by 20% compared to rupees 1,889 crore recorded in the same quarter last year. Domestic sales at rupees 1,925 crore are higher by 38%. Exports at rupees 344 crore are lower by 30%. Profit before tax at 701 crore is higher by 70% compared to the same quarter last year. For the quarter ended March 31, 2024, with respect to the last quarter, our sales at rupees 2,269 crore are lower by 9% compared to rupees 2,502 crore recorded in the last quarter. Domestic sales at rupees 1,925 crore are lower by 12%. Exports at rupees 3, 344 crore are higher by 6%. Profit before tax at rupees 701 crore is higher by 16% compared to the last quarter. I would now like to share a segment-wise breakup for the quarter ended March 31, 2024. The sales breakup segment wise is as follows. Domestic power generation domestic sales were rupees 943 crore, 40 percent higher compared to last year and 12 percent lower compared to last quarter. Distribution business sales were 604 crores, 25 percent higher compared to last year and 9 percent lower compared to last quarter. Industrial domestic business sales were rupees 348 crore, 60 percent higher compared to last year, and 16 percent lower compared to last quarter. Exports: high horsepower exports were rupees 171 crore, 17 percent lower compared to last year, and 25 percent higher compared to last quarter. LHP exports were 124 crore, 142 crore, 42 percent lower compared to last year, and 3 percent lower compared to last quarter. For the year ended March 31, 2024, with respect to the last year, our sales at rupees 8,816 crore are higher by 16 percent compared to rupees 7,612 crore recorded in the last year. Domestic sales at rupees 7,143 crore are higher by 28%. Exports at rupees 1,670. Profit before tax at 143 crore is higher by Last year. The second wise breakup for the year ended March 31, 2024. Power generation domestic 25 crore, 32 percent increase over last year. Distribution business sales were rupees 2,349 crore, 25 percent increase over last year. Industrial domestic business sales were rupees 1,296 crore, 24 percent increase over last year. Exports, 
high hotspot exports were 817 crores, 9% lower compared to last year. LSP exports were rupees 699 crore, 27% lower compared to last year. Summons India financial guidance. Uh, regarding the sales outlook for 2024-25, we continue to expect double digit growth over the fiscal year 2023-24. I now open the session for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Parish, Parikshit Kanpal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Ashwat. Uh, congratulations on a great quarter and the year, sir. So uh, my first question is on this quarter. So we have seen exceptional margins and the margin is at 23.5%. Uh, so was there any one-off during the quarter? Because if we see the numbers, the other operating expenses seems to be at 100 crores, which is like all-time low. Uh, so if you can highlight any key reason for this outperformance in margin? Yeah, I think it's a combination of multiple things why the margins are better for this quarter. One is we got a one-time uh, two-down benefit of uh, uh, of a little over 60 crores uh, from management uh, cost charges. Second is we have some advantages on rates and taxes. We also have some uh, uh, nephi benefits. So the com combined uh, other expenses came in a lot lower. Uh, like you said, it's a uh, it's a one-time uh, gain that we had uh, this year and this quarter. Similarly, we also saw that uh, profit was better because mix was better. Uh, we were able to contain our costs uh, reasonably well. Uh, we were able to hold on to some of the commodity uh, uh, gains, uh, even though commodities have started to inch up, and we had some... Uh, you know, mix advantages uh, that we took at, uh, that were favorable to us. So 60 crores was the one-off, right, in the expenses during this quarter? Net, net That's off. correct. Yeah. Uh, so secondly, on uh, FIC, uh, the traditionally, uh, we have seen the existing road drivers for the company, right? So data centers, hospitality, real estate, and put together. Uh, so if you see over the next two to three years, do you think emergence of any new demand drivers for our business, given next like, six to seven years, we have a big push on the clean energy theme. So allied to that, do you think what could be potentially the new growth drivers? And based on that, do you think incrementally, we have been guiding about 2x GDP growth, real GDP growth, so do you think that number can get revised higher over the next two, three years? Uh, first, I don't think the numbers can get revised to very much higher. Uh, our GDP, uh, the aspirational GDP of our country is to grow between 6 to 8 percent for the next 8 to 10 years. So, proportionately, our growth can be 12 to, you know, 16 percent. So, that's a, that's a pretty broad and uh, uh, ambitious uh, growth rate for, for a company when you compare it to the historicals of the company. So, uh, we would continue with that kind of guidance. Uh, what, uh, as far as markets are concerned, we think that at least for the next five years or so, the existing infrastructure-linked uh, investments uh, will continue pretty strongly. So if India wants to become a $7 trillion economy, which means uh, you know doubling from where we are uh, currently, uh, it has to be driven uh, by uh, investments in, in core infrastructure, in, in social schemes, all of which also require infrastructure. And the combination of all of that uh, requires coming products to be used in those. So I don't see any new market segments uh, emerging, but I think the existing strong market segments will continue to do well uh, over a long period. Okay. And just the last question that you did allude that you will grow maybe at 2%, 12 to 16% uh, is a broad range. So that means even for FI25, 
uh, despite taking price hikes on CPCB4 plus power gen and implementation from 1st July. So you don't, looks like you don't see any major volume impact of the same. So given the prices uh, will go up for these. And last quarter, I think the contribution was about 25% of the power gen sales from CPCB4 plus. So if you give some more color on, uh, do you think the margins at current approximately 20%? So if the growth is sustained, there's no major volume declines. Do you think that margins can improve? There's a case for margin improvement from here also. So that's one last question. That, that's uh, always been what we've been striving for. If you've heard me talk over the last uh, four or five years, we are continuously working on improving uh, the margin of the business, managing costs, and trying to get growth. So trying to not just get growth for the sake of growth, but to get profitable growth. So that will always be our endeavor. Uh, of course, there will be more pressure as uh, CPCB 4 plus becomes uh, a full stream and then everyone tries to do a market share grab. Uh, but uh, we will stick to our principles of how we have operated in this, in this market and uh, we think the opportunities are there for us to continue to grow uh, at the 2x or GDP level we are aspiring to grow at. And the share of the power Jensen in this quarter, so I think 25% was in 3Q, so in CPCB4+, plus, how much was uh, in the mix the share in Q4? Yeah, I would say roughly a, a third of our sale in the quarter was from CPCB4, so uh, it's starting to move pretty rapidly uh, into CPCB4+, plus. so we see the transition in the next quarter to happen completely. And any pre-buying you're expecting in this uh, in the first quarter before the CPCB gets implemented, uh, for gets implemented in two Q? Not very significant because see, literally we have had one year of pre-buy. How much more can people keep, uh, you know, pre-buying? So we don't expect it because, because what happens is even if you want to pre-buy now the CPCB to product and then you go in and next year somebody comes in and says that you know fit in a retrofit uh, device. You, you add all those retrofit devices to the cost of a CPCB uh, to genset. The cost is probably a little bit more than buying a CPCB for genset. So you know that that pre-buy uh, which happened uh, all over uh, you know the last three quarters was driven by the fact that many of the many of the people did not have complete product ready in CPCB4. Now, everyone has had uh, literally a year to prepare. So everyone should have product. And I don't see, uh, I don't see that impact of a free buy uh, playing uh, going forward. Okay, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you and wish you all the best. Uh, that, those were my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, kindly limit your question. The next question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Evendus Park. Please go ahead. Uh, so thanks for taking my question and on the set of numbers. Business, I have two questions. One is what has been the volume growth that you have seen? Just, just to get a sense on what is the volume growth and value growth mix that we have seen. And uh, secondly, what is the share of data centers? Was there any large orders which were there at this quarter? Or do you expect anything, any large orders coming in over the next 12 months? So to first answer the volume question, we have seen uh, overall volume has grown by roughly about 30% uh, compared to last year. It's different by different nodes, etc. So, uh, you know, it's very difficult to say exactly by which node how much it, it grows. But overall, I would say it's a pretty, pretty significant growth. 30% uh, year is, I would consider, one of the better years uh, uh, of growth. Uh, as far as the major segments uh, in the market are concerned, uh, they continue to remain the same. There hasn't been a very significant shift in those data centers continue to grow well, infrastructure-related uh, 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 growth and, uh, uh, and uh, investments in power chain continue uh, as the commercial reality, as the residential reality, as the manufacturing. So across the board, we are seeing uh, uh, reasonably strong demand as far as power chain market segments are concerned. Understood.
The mix which is coming from power gen and what is the mix which is coming from gas scale and uh, uh, what is driving this growth? Uh, yeah, so typically it's very difficult for us to say um, how much is power gen and how much is industrial. But what I can tell you is that uh, over the last three or four years, we have increased significant focus on trying to make the distribution business a strong, stable, independent, profitable kind of business. And we see growth happening in parts, we see growth happening in service contracts, we see growth in new engines, we see growth pretty much everything that we do in distribution, we are seeing growth. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's nice to see that you sometimes put start for strategies and you some work, some don't work. In this case, a strategy that we put forth three or four years ago is simply working steadily. Got it, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Good morning and congratulations on a very good set of numbers and a very good fantastic. Mm -hmm. My first question is on every annual report, you mentioned megawatt sales in a year for domestic power generation. Of course, you haven't shared that number, it's a 30% growth. It means that the number which you've done for the entire fiscal is 6.2 gigawatt. Do you think this number is ballpark right? So we anticipate this demand to remain robust and to continue strongly. Understood. The last question says, since coming to launched Centum series of 1.7 megawatt to 2 megawatt series for data center, so when, 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 when we serve the Indian customer, do they expect to uh, do they expect you to offer the new launches in India and do you need to indigenize it? I most of those are uh, are made in India. At least the the core the core uh, cool packs are certainly uh, made uh, in India. Uh, certainly, we will be launching though all those products is, is launched in India as well. So certainly, we will be launching those in India as well. Understood, sir. Thank you, and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Anwani from PL Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, so thanks for taking my question. Uh, my question is on the export market wanted uh, more color uh, uh, since uh, there's been decline from past two quarters and we have been uh, pessimistic on few markets. Just wanted to understand how the growth was for Folia and uh, what is the outlook on uh, key export market uh, for FI25? Right. So uh, last year, as uh, I stated, we uh, uh, de-grew or uh, became smaller by about 18%. The biggest drop has been in Europe, which uh, almost uh, halved, uh, and the Middle East, Africa, as well as the Asia Pacific. So there has been literally no market which uh, grew for us uh, last year as far as uh, exports is concerned. Uh, as far as uh, 25 is concerned, there still appears to be a little bit of uh, concern as far as geopolitical crises and uh, availability of, of uh, funds in some of those markets, especially in Africa. So we are not very, very optimistic that uh, we have seen the bottom of the market yet. So we expect it to maybe correct a little bit more before it bottoms out and then we start to see it grow back again. 
Sure, sir. Uh, secondly, wanted to understand since uh, there isn't pretty strong growth in the domestic market, and uh, from past two three quarters, and the outlook remains pretty strong. Wanted to understand uh, any capex requirement and uh, what are the current uh, utilization levels? Uh, yeah. Uh, just balancing capex is what we always do as we bring in more products to balance out some of the capacities. We keep doing incremental capex, but when you look at uh, installed capex, we, we continue to remain at roughly 50% utilization. From uh, manned capex, we are greater than 90% of utilization. So you know, if the cap capacity is not a problem for us, if we can get more demand, we will certainly be able to scale up pretty quickly and. Some of the strategic long-term investments, those are typically 18 to 24 months type of projects. Those are being done for global demand and those kinds of things. So there's no real capex short-term surge or emergency that is happening, but there's a steady plan uh, to uh, to meet the long-term demand and uh, to you know to attempt to uh, be a better global player. Sure, sir. Lastly, uh, on the data centers, so uh, you highlighted that uh, we are approaching 10%. So just wanted to understand, uh, uh, are we, do we have a strategy outside India also with respect to data centers and anything we are expecting from the export market also for data centers? Certainly, we continue to sell products to other countries uh, for use in data center markets. So some of our high horsepower exports go into those markets. So certainly our attempt is to try to uh, maximize and uh, export more as well. As the global opportunities keep opening up, uh, we continue to uh, attempt to play in there. Sure. So thank you. Thanks for taking my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Renu Beth from IIFN Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good morning team and congratulations for the strong performance. Um, so my first question is um, to understand a bit more um, with respect to how has been our localization plan for the CPCB4 engine and uh, how do we expect, uh, as in, in terms of time frame over next two or three years, how do we expect to fully localize this product? And thereafter, uh, what kind of impact on the gross margins do you see? Um, as the localization uh, progresses for uh, the new range of product? Yeah, we have uh, over a dozen platforms, and uh, I would say a majority of them are at high levels of localization. When I mean high levels is greater than 70 to 75 percent is what we usually classify as high levels, because there are certain components related to electronics and certain uh, certain types of parts which are not made in India, so we continue to have to uh, import them. Uh, there are some new introduced product lines which were uh, never made uh, in India, which are currently being imported and sold, and we are uh, in advanced stages of planning of uh, attempting to localize them. So this is an ongoing cycle of trying to increase the percentage of localization and uh, then uh, help using that to uh, help with pricing, it will help with uh, uh, better uh, position in the market uh, and to, uh, you know, to use it to improve the profitability of the company. So there's nothing which is either going to be very dramatic, it's a gradual process because a very large chunk of the product is already localized. Sure. And uh, within in this context, uh, you also mentioned the commodity prices started to inch up now. So how should we look at the gross margin outlook for fiscal 25 combination of CPCB4 change in the mix, commodity price going up? Earlier you had indicated 33 to 35% gross margin uh, range. Uh, last year we clocked about 34 and a half, 35. So how should we look at the margin outlook uh, for next year? And we will continue to aspire to, uh, to hold at that kind of margin level, uh, though it is, it's starting to become a challenge because uh, every major piece of commodity, whether it be copper, nickel, uh, you know, exotic materials used in after treatment, uh, you know, platinum, silver, gold, and even oil prices are all inching uh, upwards. Uh, even uh, some forms of steel, which we had seen a decline now for uh, nearly uh, six quarters in a row, have now bottomed out and have started to inch up. 
So there will be significant pressure on the material margin, uh, but we will continue to work uh, uh, with the supply base in trying to get more efficiency out of that and attempt to hold this. So this is the you know the line in the sand uh, uh, which we want to hold, but it's, it's always a challenge to do that. Got it. And uh, with respect to new product development, uh, can you share updates? Where are we with respect to certain products for the rail market, including Vande Bharat rail sets for mining and marine? And how can this uh, help to accelerate the growth um, in the respective segments for the industrial uh, portfolio in fiscal 25 26? So, quite a bit of progress has been made uh, as far as uh, new products are concerned, especially in, uh, in rail. Uh, you know, we have, we have supplied new prototypes of our hotel load converters. We are now supplying CPCB 4 plus compli compliant, uh, uh, you know, diesel uh, sets into the standard KVA power cars and also in the track recording coaches. Uh, we, are, we are beginning to supply uh, new products in uh, DEC propulsion sets. We are also entering into tenders for uh, all kinds of uh, CPCB 4 plus compliant power cars. So overall, uh, uh, you know, as we are looking at the market, we are seeing quite a few opportunities, not only in rail, but we are, you know, introducing new products in mining, we are introducing new products in marine, we are trying to introduce, uh, uh, you know, uh, of course, power gen, we have already introduced uh, most of the new products. We continue to introduce new products even into the construction segment with new series of engines, etc. So overall, the work as far as product proliferation and adding significant new products into the market, that work continues pretty strongly. So in your view, the industrial segment, which was clocking um, high team growth in 22-23 and uh, moved finally to 22-25% growth, uh, should continue to grow in high double-digit 20% plus or the growth may moderate in high teams? I don't know if we go at 20% plus, but our long-term outlook when we had provided it uh, a couple of years ago was that we see at least uh, two weeks of GDP growth of the industrial segment to continue for 10 to 15 years because we are comparing the where our infrastructure is today compared to where some of the developed nations like uh, China and Europe and uh, America are. And when you look at the state of the infrastructure we have versus the state of the infrastructure they have, significant amount of investments are needed. So I think if we continue this journey of wanting to become uh, you know, number three, number four economy and improve our infrastructure, then this demand should continue. Sure. And last, if I can, bookkeeping. Um, um, we have seen very strong cash conversion profile of the business continuing. Today we are sitting on net cash chest of almost 2,600 crores. Uh, how do we plan to utilize this? For future growth? Well, we continue to you know, give uh, return to the shareholders significant amount of cash, and we are also looking to fund some of the future growth and some of the future ideas uh, on, uh, on how the business uh, will look in the future. Some of those uh, investments are not likely to pay back returns uh, very easily, as you know, in some of the new energy cases billions of dollars have been sunk and the returns have all been negative so far. So we are, we are creating this war chest and looking for opportunities and we will deploy it as needed. Currently we are using the war chest to develop new products and uh, continue to uh, invest in scale and capacity as we become the, you know, the, uh, a major supply chain hub uh, for the world. Sure. Uh, thanks much and best wishes. Uh, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jason Sounds from ITPI Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. So just understand, you know, in terms of this your CPC exposure demand, you know, uh, so just to understand that. I'm sorry to interrupt. Sir, your voice is breaking. May I request you to use your handset, please? Yeah, sure. Hello, is it is it better now? Yes, sir. Please. Continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I was saying first that uh, with the scope of distribution that is increasing and the CPC do 4% component also increasing and since there will be more electronic parts here in the business. So just wanted to know, sir, in terms of a margin profile, is there scope for a better margin profile going ahead with the contribution of CPC 4 plus increasing? Uh, 
Uh, the answer is yes, that is what we have been aspiring to do. The reality is still to be seen uh, uh, when competition uh, hots up, when everybody is at, uh, uh, is at 100% CKCB4+. Plus. So, uh, again, to clarify, yes, certainly because the content is more, the, the complexity is more, the technology is more, the risk is more, uh, so there is an opportunity to uh, have better margins. Uh, the reality all depends on on uh, on competition in the market. Sure, sir. And sir, you had also alluded to reconditioning being being a uh, uh, massive uh, growth opportunity ahead as it is in developed economies. So I just wanted to understand. I mean, uh, reconditioning will be a good opportunity to play, but it could hurt your volumes. You know, going ahead or probably cannibalize your volume. So. I just wanted your perspective on how would you balance both of these, you know, going ahead? I think uh, these are different market segments. So, you know, um, uh, the, a person who wants a new a new product has a different profile uh, and a different cost profile and the person who wants a reconditioned product has a different cost uh, profile and, uh, and, uh, and a different set of expectations. So, in applications such as industrial and mining, etc., reconditioning is the most normal way of doing things because these folks utilize the equipment uh, 24 by 7. So, if you have working equipment, then you know you get significant value back by reconditioning, uh, and you know those customers don't want to buy new uh, anyway. But there are other market segments where utilization is low and, uh, you know, there are some advantages to uh, having the latest and greatest technology and, and certainly in those segments, uh, they don't want reconditioning products. So, we are talking about uh, two uh, entirely different uh, market segments and sometimes uh, uh, we can use uh, reconditioned products to compete against uh, some uh, some competition who has different and lower margin expectations. So uh, it's, it's pretty complicated, but I think there's an opportunity uh, globally. We have seen in multiple markets around the world that uh, the two markets coexist, and uh, of course, reconditioning is incredibly good for the environment. So if we are looking at it from the ESG angle, nothing is better than reconditioning as far as uh, uh, you know greenhouse gases are concerned. So. That's the way we are looking at uh, the reconditioning uh, market from an India perspective. Okay, sure, sir. Thanks for that. And sir, just uh, in terms of your Gen Z OEMs, I just wanted to uh, understand better in terms of so with Jackson Power, Sudhir Gen Zs, you know, uh, or Powerica being there, I just want to understand on a basic level: do is there any value addition from their end, or they are just pure play regional distributors for Cummins India? Uh, they do some last mile value addition, uh, it's, uh, but the technology is uh, entirely common. And, uh, these guys add some value and they also uh, reach out, they, they have the contact with the customer. So from that sense, you know, the value is in working with the customer and making sure that they are serviced to the common standard. Yeah, okay. And so just last year, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, uh, there is a lot of traction in the LHP or the lower value segments as well, uh, you know, all across with, as you said, data centers, infra, reality, etc. going, uh, doing very well. So I just wanted to understand in there, in that pocket, it being a price sensitive market, uh, are we looking at deepening market presence there or we are not focusing there due to, you know, or there's a lower focus due to the price sensitivity angle? What's our strategy in this segment? Uh, certainly, uh, even there, there is there are multiple levels. Uh, uh, there are different types of customers. There are customers with whom, uh, who, if customers that want reliability, durability, and quality, they typically go for comments. And uh, so there is within that segment as well. There is uh, there are pockets and and uh, entire uh, segments which which buy a lot of comments products. There are other segments, uh, especially segments like telecom, etc., which are absolutely just cost-based uh, segments, and we have a very, very low share over there. And we are looking at uh, alternate ways of uh, trying to compete in some of those segments. 
We are looking at seeing can we obsolete the technology of internal combustion engines in some of those segments and move to some uh, you know battery based or other technologies. Uh, but we continue to play in all the segments. Uh, uh, certainly, like you said, uh, our aspiration on profitability is higher than some of those competitors, and we will not, for the sake of market share, just uh, you know enter in into it and use it as a loss leader. Sure, sir. Thanks for answering all my questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants to kindly limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please do join the queue. The next question is from the line of Atul Tiwari from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. thanks a lot, and congratulations on very strong set of numbers. So my first question is, could you comment on your current market share in domestic power gen and industrial segment? Any rough number? We don't comment on market share uh, as far as uh, these segments are concerned. All I can tell you is uh, we continue to hold and in some places get better. Okay. And so my second question uh, is on some of these new, you know, high horsepower uh, gensets developed by the parent, which, you know, will come to India. So, you know, how, how is it decided? I mean, which uh, particular platform or genset uh, or, or engine will be manufactured by Cummins India and which will go to the other unlisted parents company? So, I mean, what is the algorithm for deciding it, et cetera? It's a combination of, uh, of cost, duties, uh, closeness to the market, uh, you know, the, the differences in the types of products. So it's a, it's a combination of it. So uh, as, as you know, Cummins has only three major manufacturing hubs around the world. We have the big North America manufacturing hub, which is consists of uh, US and, Canada and Mexico. Then you have the, the big India hub, and then you have the the China hub. So Typically, a lot of the China uh, hub is for internal consumption, but some of the Chinese OEMs would buy the product internally and also sell it uh, around the world. India is used as a hub to service most of the, yeah, you know, most of the global uh, markets, especially from a low horsepower uh, perspective. And uh, North America and Mexico are used to service the the North America and uh, some of the uh, very, very specialized uh, markets which, uh, which are served with the products from there. So the logic is pretty, pretty straightforward. It gets complicated when you, you know, at the actual implementation just because of the overlap of, of, of uh, OEMs and customers around the world. Yeah, but sir, when uh, when the, the manufacturing is done in India, how is it decided whether Cummins India will manufacture it or Cummins Technologies India will manufacture it? That... I think uh, pretty much uh, uh, all of the product has been made, which has been made historically by Cummins India Limited, continues to be made by Cummins India Limited in the market that it serves. So if it has been the power gen market or the industrial market or the you know, or the defense mining market, all of those products continue to remain made uh, by uh, Commons India Limited, other than some specific cases where global investments are made in India for global consumption. So, uh, so there have been a few engine platforms which have been, which have been licensed by Cummins to India just to buy back to, uh, to let's say, North America or some other market. So in those cases, those products which are 100% exclusively for, uh, you know, internal consumption and not related to the market in India uh, are, uh, are, have been in CPITL. Otherwise, the logic has been very, very consistent and straightforward. Okay, so thank you. That's good to hear. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mahesh Pendre from LIC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. I have just one question. Sir, what is the waiting period for Genset now? If someone place order with you, uh, how much time you take it to deliver now? Yeah, I will give you a business tool that you answer. And the answer is it depends. For industry, huh. it's okay, sir. Even for industry, it's fine, sir. No, it depends again based on what the product is. If it is a low horsepower product, we will give it to you in less than two weeks. If it is uh, something with the data center, 95 liter product, the lead time is anywhere from 
you know, six months to one one year. If it is something in between, it can be anywhere from uh, you know uh, thirty days to uh, three or four months. So it's difficult for me to just tell you what is the lead time. Uh, on an average, we like to have lead times of uh, less than one month to supply both products. Sure. And sir, uh, has this changed compared to last year? Yeah, because capacity has increased, so it is the, 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 if I'm saying the average uh, lead time is 30 days, uh, the average lead time used to be 60 days. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jonas Putta from Birla Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Mr. Bhutta, I have unmuted your line. Can you proceed? Yeah. Uh, congratulations, gentlemen, on a great set of results. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sure. So, uh, Ashwat, just trying to better understand the implications of CBCP4 Plus on our both gross margins and EBITDA margins. And given that now, uh, you know, this accounts for almost 33% of our power gen sales versus maybe what, 25% for nine months, is it fair to sort of at least assume that the delta change that we've seen in gross margins, uh, Q3, uh, Q4 over Q3, which is sequential in nature is roughly about 100 basis points. Uh, a large part of that is attributable to uh, the increased contribution of CBCB4+. Plus. That's first on the gross no, margins. I would say that. I would say a little bit, but not a very, very significant portion yet. Because, see, it's very difficult to say what will be the true impact on in improving the margin of CBCB4+, plus till everyone is 100% CBCB4+. Plus. So right now, yeah, uh, certainly uh, uh, the starting out margins of CPCB4 plus are better than CPCB2, but will that continue to hold when everyone is also selling CPCB4 plus? Uh, the answer is probably not. Understood. And uh, by when do you think that we'll probably end up getting a probably greater picture? By, by October. By September, October time frame, we should have a lot of clarity on what the the you know the, what the end pricing uh, with competition will be uh, for the market. Got it. And uh, from an implication on the you know below gross margin, so other expenses side, what we've seen over years is our royalty plus support fees have now sort of trended downwards from a peak of 3% to roughly 1.7% as of FY23. I'm not sure what it is in FY24, but it seems that Q4 had some bit of one-offs and I think that number would have in fact gone down further. With uh, CBCB4 plus uh, coming in FY25 for at least nine months, where should we assume uh, this particular line item to trend towards over the next two to three years? I think uh, we should be able to hold it at the level we are currently. So they don't take this month, uh, this quarter was an anomaly because of that one-time reversal. Uh, but overall, we, we, should able, we should be able to hold it at the same percentage level despite the uh, introduction of many, many new products is, is, is the way we are looking at it. Understood. And my second question was on export so you know with cpcp4 plus uh, we were intending to get these certifications to supply to north america etc and yes. this was an opportunity which was agnostic of how that end market is performing given that this was a completely new opportunity and a wallet share gain uh, where are we in that journey and uh, do you believe that that shows up in at least fi 25 uh, export order board, or you think that's a opportunity beyond F25? I think uh, we have made a lot of progress. A uh, couple of uh, at least uh, three of the products have already been launched into the global market. They've just been marketed. Uh, pilot samples have now been provided, etc. We should start seeing uh, maybe from the second half of the year, we should start seeing some uh, pickup in those markets. Uh, 
full year impact will probably be the next year, but uh, we should start seeing some full, full coming in for those products. So products have been received very well, so uh, I think uh, that's uh, that's something we are actually looking forward to. So from a sales mix perspective, you know, we've troughed at roughly 19% of sales being exports from a sort of peak of roughly 30-35%. Uh, do you believe yeah. with all these opportunities, F25, uh, you know, exports could be at least 20-25% of sales or uh, or, or uh, it would still remain in that no, sub-20%? I think uh, this year uh, we, will, we will see some more deterioration in demand from a global perspective because we don't think the markets have bottomed out yet. With all of this uh, geopolitical crisis happening in... Uh, uh, in the Middle East, uh, it has had quite a bit of impact on uh, on uh, sales, and Europe also seems to be uh, at an uh, at an all time low that we are seeing in Africa, and uh, Africa also, you know, is struggling a lot, especially with currency problems. So we think there will be at least another quarter of uh, uh, you know demand being anemic before things are completely bottomed out and then start to pick up again. So it's very unlikely that the the percentage of uh, uh, exports as compared to domestic is going to change very significantly for this year. Uh, and we are optimistic that this will start to pick up and as the new products uh, start coming in and also as we start doing more and more uh, uh, components uh, and uh, other parts for export that we will we will our ambition is to get back to 30 maybe 5 percent of our sales being export so we are not just giving up on it we are uh, aggressively pursuing it but i don't see it happening this year understood uh, great thanks for answering all my questions and all the very best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of amit mahavar from ubs please go ahead uh, hi, Afshat. Uh, congratulations on great uh, show yet again. So I have two quick questions. First on, uh, yeah, first on, uh, you commented on market share, and I respect uh, you know, giving data beyond a point is difficult, but um, assuming a steady state 100% uh, CPCV4 power gen revenue for the next uh, few years, um, do you think the stable market positioning for Cummins will be better than it was in last decade of power gen market share? And I'm talking more about the non-LHP portfolio because LHP is not our main forte in India. Uh, that's what we're working on, and that's uh, that's what we hope with the uh, with the kind of products we have introduced into the market that we are able to uh, uh, improve our position. Uh, that's uh, that's the that's the challenge in front of management to be able to do that, and that's what we're working on. Yeah, yeah. the question is more because um, India has been a price sensitive market forever, and but in last 12 months, it has been a seller's market. But as you commentary also mentioned, uh, you know, incrementally, it will keep uh, becoming a challenge because you will have at least half a dozen, uh, you know, players in India who will actually have, yeah. you know, yeah. So that's why I was asking. Yeah, so our, our strategy for that is to uh, introduce uh, uh, better products, more products, and uh, sub-segment it in, in a way by which... Uh, uh, we provide more value in each of the segments that we play in. So uh, our whole play historically has always been on being able to provide better value than others. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's well known that we are not the lowest uh, cost uh, player in the market. So we, we sell based on having the better product in the market. And we will continue to uh, work on the product. We'll continue to work on the customers to provide them better value for what they get from us. And we will continue to, you know, strive to uh, maintain that balance between profitability and growth. Fair. So, should second and quick one follow up to what Jonas was asking. If you look at the global uh, manufacturing centers for Cummins uh, in China, India, uh, globally, um, the electrification dynamics are restricting Chinese companies to supply to the Western world, especially in the sensitive areas, uh, you know, in the grids part. Uh, even in the data center, that might happen. So, do you think that will potentially benefit Cummins India? Um, yeah. Especially uh, the, the answer is yes, but uh, it's, the answer also is yes, but it's also tricky 
If you look at the global market share of Chinese companies, even if the United States, you know, prevents them from, you know, so buying or uh, does not buy as many products or even Europe puts all kinds of bans on them, irrespective of that, they continue to increase their global presence from an overall manufacturing market share uh, percentage. So even if their own domestic players, they, they, they don't sell to many of these markets, they just keep growing with their own products. Uh, their presence in the global scheme uh, is, is larger than what it is today. So, yes, it benefits India uh, if the uh, United States and Europe don't buy as much from China, which they have started to do. But that does not mean that you mean, uh, you know, the uninterrupted growth which China had between 1995 and 2015, we will have the same kind of growth. That hypothesis is, is not getting tuned out uh, as of now. Very, very helpful, Ashwat. Thank you. Congratulations, and uh, thank you for uh, better transparency always. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Mungya from Kotex Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity, and congratulations on a very strong set of results, um, even this time around. Uh, my you. first question... Uh, Sure. Uh, my, my first question was uh, more on this 30% um, growth that you're talking about in um, power gen volumes. Um, you also suggested that last three quarters have seen some amount of pre-buying. Is it fair to assume that in the 30% number, there is some pre-buying quotient as well? This is the full year number I'm talking about. And then that yeah. starts becoming an impediment incrementally. If you could kind of quantify, it would be useful. Yeah, so uh, the, I don't see... Uh, so. When there is a very strong pre-buy, usually you see a lot of inventory uh, which are held by uh, our OEMs and with our dealers, etc. But as of now, I am seeing average or below average inventory uh, being held, which uh, lends me to believe that uh, yes, the, the pre-buy cycle and you know you you can't have permanent pre-buy. That some time you know the the, the cycle runs out, you run out of you know, holding power and, and, and money to just keep holding and buying uh, products. And it is our hypothesis that a big chunk of that is done with. There is some, uh, but it's not significant the way it was last year when uh, when when there was the significant, you know, one quarter worth of pre-buy sitting in the market kind of inventory. We are not seeing any inventory in the market with, in, with that kind of uh, uh, impact. So we think it will. There will always be some turbulence as you transition from one, uh, you know, one emission cycle to another. But it's nothing which we think is significant anymore. Yeah, and again, just to clarify, if the growth this time is thirty percent, uh, which is above normal, can the growth be a kind of below average next year because of that? Because a lot of um, products have been sold this year itself. Yes, uh, I see the the power gen market is very difficult to classify. That day. it's a very very cyclical market. So you you get years where you grow by you know you get you get multiple years where you can get uh, twenty percent plus growth, and then you get years where you even decline uh, by uh, double digit plus level. So we still think that this uh, this financial year will will continue to be a growth year on top of a stronger growth year. Of course, will it grow at 30% uh, uh, that we got last year? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, but we will continue to see at least, uh, uh, you know, two years of GDP type of growth. Um, uh, understood. Um, the second question that, and thanks for this, sir. The second question that I had was more on exports. As in, you've talked about Europe as an opportunity for um, yeah, CPC before compliant products, and you've also talked about cash being utilized in a manner that um, you become more global. Are there plans beyond CPCB4 um, as well that you're thinking through from an investment perspective? And the related question is, versus whatever time you're addressing today, uh, what kind of increase in time basically happens because of these endeavors? So I'll answer that question with, with, with multiple responses. One is that currently CPCB4 plus is only for 900 kilowatt and below. Uh, and uh, so you have this entire portfolio beyond 900 kilowatt going all the way to 4,000 kilowatt, which uh, which is uh, you know uh, which is does not fall under those regimes. So all of those have the opportunity of 
of uh, coming under emissions then the moment emissions comes in the technology is get incredibly more complicated second uh, is that uh, countries in europe have uh, said that 2050 is the year by which they will uh, try to get out of uh, internal combustion products and get into uh, clean energy but as we are seeing a lot of that is getting uh, pushed out and there are some alternate solutions like hydrogen internal combustion engines which then uh, fuzzy the line so if i can if you can get a zero emission product with an internal combustion engine and why do i need to spend money on a fuel cell or uh, other other forms of uh, energy generation so uh, the answer is that emissions will continue to get tighter so after cp cp4 plus since cp cp4 plus is the tightest emission right now we don't know what the next one is but the industrial markets have uh, two levels of emissions which have already been announced in europe we have to go undergo those in uh, india as well the automotive market has already gone to euro 7 now or will be going to euro 7 soon india will be uh, at par with uh, europe on euro 7 so you know 